Have you ever wished all of your DaVinci Resolve projects were on a static server and you could edit off of your laptop and your desktop interchangeably? Well, let's find out how it happens in DaVinci Resolve Project Server with DaVinci Resolve 19. Before we get started, let's talk about what we're trying to do. I'd like to be able to edit here at my desktop and maybe later in the day, be able to go edit on the couch with my family. To do that, I have a MacBook, but do I need to export archives and then re-import an archive on every single project I'd like to work on? Well, no, I don't, because they built the DaVinci Resolve project server for DaVinci Resolve 19. It allows me to maintain all of the project data on a computer that's always on, whether it be this desktop or, in my case, a server I have in a server closet on another part of the house. This allows me to run some lightweight software that can keep track of all of the clips that are included in a project, all of the cuts, any color or effects that have been applied, and have them accessible from any computer that connects to that project server. There is a drawback though and a couple of gotchas, so let's take a look at this and then we'll go through those. I'll assume you've got DaVinci Resolve installed. Now I'm going to download the DaVinci Resolve project server, which you can find here at blackmagicdesign.com support. From there, pick the second block, DaVinci Resolve and Fusion Software. Scroll down and in the leftmost column, you get your downloads. Here we see DaVinci Resolve 19, that is the free edition, DaVinci Resolve Studio 19, that's the studio edition, and a few more spots down, DaVinci Resolve Project Server 19, which is free. This was a fantastic addition from Blackmagic Design during COVID to open this up to all software users so that remote work could happen. With that downloaded and then double clicked installed, I've got DaVinci Resolve Project Server here on my desktop. This allows me to maintain project libraries. I'll add a new one. You'll notice I've already got four. From what I can tell you, you can have a million. I'm just gonna call this tutorial. And, and it's really important you remember that exact name as well as which letters you capitalize because when we go to the next step, we need to connect back to this library directly with its name. It may take a minute to create, but now you'll notice I have a tutorial. I'm going to click on the details of that project and enable it by clicking the slider at the top. Click authorize. And now this is able to be connected to across the internet. I'm going to further click on the gear and click export access key, which I can store on the desktop. And it can make it easy. You just import this in DaVinci Resolve by dropping it into the project manager. Or, and we're gonna do this the, the old fashioned way. I'm gonna type this in manually so that you can see exactly what happens. So leaving behind my virtual machine, I run off of a TrueNAS cluster and coming back to my DaVinci Resolve install here on my local desktop. Here you'll notice these are all locally here on my desktop as local projects. You may not have noticed, but at the top there's also a network tab. This is all of the projects you can access over the network. I'm going to, however, click on projects up here at the top. That's this little box up here at the top that opens a sidebar and allows me to add a project library down here at the bottom. Adding that library, remember I called it tutorial, and I know that my IP address for that server is 10.10.111. We left the basic username and password in place. Make sure I click on connect at the top and then click connect at the bottom. As you can see, it very quickly added that library. Now, there aren't any projects stored on it yet. I'm going to double click to create a new project. You have to understand what's happening here. We have the project here in DaVinci Resolve on our local computer. However, there is now an entry that's been made for the project server to be able to host the metadata about the program. So let's find out some of the intricacies of working here and being able to work across on other computers. First, I'm going to add some clips to the media pool and it doesn't matter what we add. So I'll just add some of these screen recordings that I've been working on. And now they're part of my clip footage, right? Fantastic, I can put them here. I could edit this so that it was a different length. Maybe I'll jump to the edit page because I like it better. I able to edit off of Fantastic, so now we're working, we've got a project. I'll click File and Save Project or Control S to save. And we'll call this our tutorial, Project Edit. I've now got a project called Tutorial Project Edit. It's hosted off of my project server. And 
the server library is called tutorial. Okay, what does that mean? Let's jump back over to my virtual machine and let's find out what that means. As we know, we've got the DaVinci Resolve project server running. We see tutorial and if I click on it, I now have a tutorial project edit. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna jump over to my MacBook and see if I can connect and make it all work. Here we go. Here I am on the MacBook and I'm gonna click add project library just like I did on the Windows computer there. I have to remember the name of the project server or library directly as well as the IP address 10.0.10.111 and make sure I'm using connect instead of create, connect. And there it is, it's been added. Oh, and the project's there. Hmm, let me double click on that so I can edit. Oh, wait a minute, project in use. You see what's happening is as these projects are created, they're created and locked to a single user mode, but we can change that. So I'm gonna hit cancel on the Mac and go back over to the Windows machine. Here, as we know, I've got the entire project configured and loaded. I'll choose the file menu and come down to multiple user collaboration. Clicking on that, I've now enabled multiple users to connect and share editing details of this project. So now if we go back to the MacBook, and as we open this on the MacBook, you can see everything's red. This project is able to open, but this red icon in the top left, the Relink Media icon is a problem. I click on it and locate those clips. Now I have copied six of them over here onto my MacBook, and if I click OK, five of those clips could not be found. Hmm, okay, well that's not perfect. Um, now, one of the interesting things about this is because I've got a Windows computer that I set up the project on, a Mac that I'm trying to edit off of, they use a different structure in the file names and that can cause a problem because if I change the project to relink it into a different directory, then I'm not able to access it until the other user is no longer using it as well because the project setting can only keep one file path per file. The moral of this story is you need to have your file structures on every computer that you plan to edit from set the same or you need to be prepared to relink the media every time that you switch computers you're editing on. This can really be difficult for multi-user projects. You have to have a common file structure all computers use to store the footage. And here we are after linking that media, I'm now able to edit directly here because the footage has been copied to the MacBook and I've been able to relink the media so that it has the right file directory that it's reaching into for the footage. Jumping back to the Windows computer, I can come right back in, open the project, and as it opens now, it's mad. It can't find those three files. Unfortunately, we can't find the three files that are here because they're currently mapped. Watch this. I can't get to a Mac file structure from here. And so I would need to come back in, click relink, and choose to locate those missing files like that, and now they're back in and alive. So this can turn into a continual frustration point, but for my use, just across the house, not that big a deal. Thanks for watching. If you have questions or comments, put them below. I'm happy to answer whatever I can. And in the meantime, if you find this to be useful, let me know that too. I'm thrilled to hear about it. So thanks for watching and have a great day.